People are your partners, not your piggy banks. That means you're going to go out of your way to say, oh, I remember this person is doing something special. Let me go out of my way and actually say congratulations. I don't care about what you're going to do for me. I care about who you are. And that is the difference when you're building for belonging because belonging builds believers. Welcome, everybody. I could literally not be more excited to be here today with my good friend, Floyd Jones. Floyd, welcome to What the Fundraising. I cannot believe it. (laughs) I'm so excited to be here. This is so long overdue, and I'm really excited that we get to talk about a topic that I feel like has kind of evolved for both of us over the last few years, like both in terms of conversations we've had in our friendship and things we've been doing in our work for the nonprofit sector around belonging and like what creates feelings of belonging, what creates community rooted in belonging, what makes us like in our brains and in our bodies and our soul, just like know that we do belong and how do we create moments and experiences and organizations that do that. So there's nobody else I would rather be having this conversation with today. And I'm just so thrilled you're here. I am so excited. I can't wait to get into it. You are someone who I'm like, he needs no introduction. But in case there is like one person who's listening who doesn't already know who you are, can you just give everyone a little like intro to you and your work and what brings you to our conversation? Yes. Uh, So my name is Floyd Jones. I love community. I feel like community has been at my core for so long. I'm the director of community at Give Butter. All of our amazing change makers, I was employee number six there. So to watch us continue to grow and flourish has been exciting. I'm also the founder of my own community called Back Black. And we focus on Black-led nonprofit leaders and helping them with raising their money and scaling their, their income and their impact. Come on, somebody. I have been a grassroots fundraiser for the past decade. I've raised over $20 million for organizations around the country. And I'm trying to spread that that same message across the board. I'm trying to show that community really is the catalyst. Okay, I love that. And I'm also like laughing to myself because I think the last time we were on a call, you told me that I always drink kombucha when I'm on a call with you. And I have no idea. I haven't had a kombucha in a month. But today I accidentally <laughs> grabbed <at> one. <laughs> so we know each other very well. Um, and I think it's part of what creates like our sense of belonging with one another. Mm. So talk to me, talk to me about like the connection between community and belonging. Like Mm, what mm. does, when community is built right, how does it make people feel and know that they belong? I'm so happy that you shared this story because I will share a personal story between us and our friendship. So this was the moment that in my head and in my heart, transform from community to belonging, right? I was giving a speaking engagement right near San Francisco. I was just excited. We were doing something brand new and it was like a brand new thing. I was with John and Becky. I'm sure y'all know John and Becky in this community. And we decided to go and visit Mallory. We had dinner with Mallory and her beautiful family. And as soon as we got there, Mallory was like, oh, I have a whole bottle of champagne to celebrate your speaking engagement. And in my head, I was just like, This is what belonging looks like, right? Uh, Anybody, I know a lot of people and I'm so thankful. I'm so blessed for that. But there's a a difference between, oh, congratulations to we are going to actually shape and go out of our way to make sure you know that you are celebrated, that your work is appreciated, but then your soul and who you are is appreciated. And that made me belong in our friendship, but it also made me belong in myself that said, you know what? I do matter. I do play a role and I am important, right? And so I think about how do you maximize that feeling here? Yes, this is our friendship, but also what are you thinking about that in your own organizations, right? A lot of times we just treat donors like a piggy bank. And I always say people are your partners, not your piggy banks, People are your partners, not your piggy banks. That means you're going to go out of your way to say, oh, I remember this person is doing something special. Let me go out of my way and actually say congratulations. I don't care about what you're going to do for me. I care about who you are, right? Mm. And that is the difference when you're building for belonging because belonging builds believers. 
Oh my gosh, I knew we were going to get so many good quotes from this in our field. Um, but okay, gosh, there's something like so tender there that I feel like is so important, which is like this piece around, like it didn't take that much for me to do that to you. What it took was a level of consciousness around your experience, right? I was just like thinking about you coming over and what's been going on in your life. And like, it wasn't like I sat there for an hour brainstorming all the ways I could make you feel a particular way, right? It was just like, I was thinking about you and it really naturally lent itself to being like, how can I celebrate this amazing moment that he's in when I get to like spend some time with him? And I I think sometimes like in nonprofits, we think like, we like, rack our brains around these questions and we we tr- we kind of try to like grind into them instead of creating like softness around them like gosh what feels what would feel good here and we don't like ask ourselves those like the like soul questions we're like all up in our like brain about it what are some you always have like such good prompts i feel like around things like this what are some like things that you think about or questions that you ask yourself when you're trying to create community and belonging? Oh, such a good question. Okay, so I have to give another example that you have done. (laughs) Y'all, you don't know, listen to this and be like, okay, I can't listen anymore. The coloring book that you sent to fun, that was such a brilliant thing. I'm like, this is literally genius because you took the time to think about your community. You were like, you don't need to buy nothing. You don't need to do go out of your way and do anything extra. I'm just here to support you. I'm just here to give you something to brighten your day. Little things like that are so incredibly important. And to go back to your thing about what is a prompt or what is a question, I always ask myself, how do I want to feel after this experience? How do I want to feel doing this? What is my intention for this community? I promise you, I always say this all the time, but if you're going in just for a donor, if you're going in just for a transaction, if you're going in just for an action, that's the only thing that you're going to get. That is the only thing that you're going to get. But remember, community, as I said at the beginning, community is a catalyst. People will come for your event. They will come for your campaign, but they will stay because they feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves. And that is what we need to start transforming our thinking around. That's what we need to start thinking about for the longevity of our organization, right? Okay, there's something you said there that I think is so important. I mean, everything that you said, but this piece around like, what is the whole experience that you're looking for people to have as opposed to kind of like checking a box around, I have shown gratitude and you asked yourself, how do I want to feel? And I actually think that's like a really important and overlooked thing. Like when we're doing gratitude and community building and we're just doing it as like an operation, it doesn't feel great to us either. We're like, I'm like operationalizing this like super human, super connected experience. And probably if we did a lot more, like, how do I want to feel when I create this space for my community? How do I want to feel when I create this opportunity for us to connect? We actually would probably be making decisions that were better for everybody. A hundred percent. Because remember, you're not just making community. You're a part of that community. You are also a facilitator of that community. I always tell people community building is different business, child, because listen, when you are not, you are now stepping into the role of facilitator. You're not in here just to reap the benefits or reap the rewards. You are not facilitating an experience. Community for community to be successful, it has to be rooted in transformation. So you have to ask myself, what is the transformation? You remember, you are a bridge between where your donor is and the change they want to see in the world. You're a bridge between where your volunteers are and the impact that they want to have in the world. You are a bridge to get them to that desired outcome. And you have to think about it from that perspective. So now you say, I need to operate with transformation in mind. I need to design my programs with transformation in mind. I need to design my fundraising campaigns with transformation in mind. Because at the end, if they're not getting to where they want to get to, then you're not going to get where you need to get to. So as you were talking, I was like putting myself in the fundraiser, like in my fundraiser body of like when I was working 15, 16 hour days, totally freaking burnt out, like feeling like really underappreciated myself and feeling like, okay, I want what you're talking about, but there is this sound of kind of surrender in it too. This piece around like co-creation, around being like in multiple modalities in relationship to other people, this like 
being on a journey together without sort of clear endpoints or check boxes, that there's this like losing of the sense of control. And ultimately, I think community building requires that because you can't have co-creation without ambiguity because you don't know all the things yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you don't know what their outcome is going to be. You know what I mean? How many times has a donor surprised you and written a ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar check, and you're like, "Oh my god, I just asked for two hundred dollars!" But because <laughs> you had done the groundwork, that that's the other side of it. You know what I mean? And I think that that's what the beauty in community is, right? It, because when you ask people to to do their best, right, that's also another aspect of a thriving community is when everyone is doing their best, when they're giving at their capacity, when they're showing up to their extent, right? That is what it's about. And you, I always say, your job now is to create space for transformation to take place, right? You need to create space for transformation to take place. Okay. So, but then how does the fundraiser soothe the anxiety that they feel around hitting those fundraising metrics Mm. in the ambiguous, gray, messy middle Mm. of community building? Mm -hmm. My first question is, I would ask, is the fundraising goal, like, is that anxiety for you? Or is that anxiety for the goal? Like, what, what is the anxiety for? And ask yourself, where is this anxiety stemming from? And what is the anxiety telling me, right? Because a lot of times we get anxious because we're focused on a goal and we're focusing on, I got to hit this number. I got to hit this benchmark. Well, what is the meaning behind the metrics? Are you still able to serve the same amount of people? Are you still able to support your staff? Okay, maybe this campaign didn't, didn't reach the fundraising goal that you wanted it to reach. Okay, well, what are the other ways that we can now mobilize our community, right? What are the other different things that we can tap into, Right. So I think that we can't be so married to a goal or married to a destination. I know it's so cheesy, but it's like you got to be married to the journey because life is a journey. You're going to get roadblocks all the time. And also, if you always hit your goals every single time, then what are you learning in that process? You know what I mean? Like that's a part of co-creation. Right. If if no one is responding to your campaign or you're not hitting X, Y, Z goal. okay, then what is not resonating here with my people? What am I doing that's not resonating with my people? I always say, Nelson Mandela actually always said, okay, (laughs) there's never losing. You don't lose. I never lose. I either win or learn. So in your next campaign, if you don't hit your benchmark, what are you going to learn from this experience? Maybe it is donor fatigue. Maybe it is your communication strategy. Maybe it is a campaign that's not resonating and hitting. And that's okay. Let it teach you something so that you can continue growing. Because if your community is not growing, then maybe it's dying. Yeah. And, you know, we've learned so much, like Giving Tuesday has put out this, you know, great initiative, Giving Pulse, where Mm. they're starting to track like donor, you know, insights and kind of how they feel about nonprofits and their trust barometers like throughout the year. And it's just been so interesting in relationship to like what you're saying right now around the way that nonprofits have historically and continue to prioritize large wealthy donors at the Mm. expense of you know, grassroots, everyday donor populations. Mm. And so we Mm. have less people giving and we're becoming increasingly dependent on our like highest net worth, quote unquote, donors. And and I understand the pull around time and time being finite and all this stuff. But I think that piece there around your community always needing to be growing, acquisition always needing to be top of mind. It is critical, like without those things and without a focus on those things, like your fundraising is going to go down. Even if you've been able to buoy it a year because you've got one major donor to like up level in a big way that year over time, like being distracted away from community building, from engagement, from all that stuff is so detrimental to your fundraising. And I want to pull something up, child. I'm looking, as you just said that, this really, really hit me because I was reflecting on it. Okay, I got some game for y'all. Y'all ready with the fundraising? Let's do it. So I wrote something down because people ask me all the time, how do you get, how do you consistently bring in new donors for your organization? And this is something I'm working on right now. I'm calling it the three Ps. Okay. Partnership, promotion, and people. 
Okay. So first is partnership. Who in your community are you going with? So many times, and let me tell you, I have worked with Nike. I have worked with NBA 2K. I have worked with Whole Foods. I have worked with Visa. I have worked with so many different corporate brands. Why? Because I understood that there was value in what I had to bring, what I have, what my organization has to offer, and there's alignment there. So many nonprofits, so many grassroots organizations are like, worried and focusing on this, like the five people that they have in their donor database. And I'm like, <laughs> there are so many people out there. And if you have to understand that the world is big, the world is big. And if you're only looking at it through small lenses, that is all you're going to get. Abundance is real. We talk about abundance mindset all the time, but baby, abundance mindset starts with asking. Just open up your mouth and ask the company down the street that aligns with your company. Don't just ask random, I'm not going to say a name because shout out, I don't want to get sued. Don't ask a random company. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are operating in youth sports like we were, a, a Nike partnership was perfect, right? A Whole Foods partnership was perfect because we had alignment. People always want to do good. I have one thing I have learned, especially with most recently with Back Black, people want to get involved. They want to support. They want to help. They just need an avenue to do that. So I always say, if you want a place to put your money, child, pick me. I'll, I'll let you know. Okay? I'll let you know. Be that outlet for people. So that's partnership. Two is promotion. Don't be afraid to actually say, we need donations. But don't be afraid to build your personal brand also. If you're a leader, if you're a fundraiser, talk about what you care about. Don't just put it underneath a mat and expect people to understand what, you, what you're doing. The reason why I go so hard on LinkedIn and all that different is because I believe in what I'm talking about. And if you believe in something, if you actually believe that your organization has the solution to fighting that disease or solving hunger or, 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 or helping with education, wouldn't you talk about it? Wouldn't you talk about it? You have to be that passionate about what you're doing. That's why I say alignment determines your assignment. Don't just sign up for a job. Don't just sign up to run a campaign. Don't just sign up to do something. Do something that tugs at your heartstrings. Do something that brings you to life because that's the thing that's going to help you keep going and spreading the word about your mission. So partnership, promotion, and then the last one is people. We talked about, yes, you need to be acquiring new people, but how do you go deeper with the people that you already have? I always say transformation. We can't just talk about transformation but not have a path for them to transform. So maybe they're a one-time, maybe they go to an event. Well, how do you say, okay, you went to that event. Can you help me plan this event now? Or, hey, you are a fundraiser. Can you help recruit more fundraisers? Or, hey, you work at this company. And I noticed that your company does corporate gripping, and that's something that I did do. I researched every single volunteer that I had, and I asked them what company you worked at. And then I did a mix with I saw what companies do uh, CSR practice that are aligned with what we're doing. And I wrote the letters for them. Take your people deeper. There are levels. You have more than one level to you. You have more than one layer to you. If someone only met you at the surface, that's why you and I are friends because we talk to each other on the deeper levels. You're not just meeting me for what I can do. It's so funny. We've been friends for so long and this is the first time I am on your podcast. The first <laughs> time I am on your podcast. And we've been friends for years. We have been friends for years. But that shows that our friendship is beyond what we can do for each other. Stop treating your people like piggy banks. I already said it. Don't treat them like a piggy bank and treat them like your partner. And that is how you will see success. Okay. I don't even know. I was like, not, I cannot take notes fast enough for all of your wisdom. Um, so, and, and anyone who's listening to this, I mean, you must have known if you've ever seen me and Floyd together, you just knew this was going to be a love fest for the entire episode. So we will not be stopping anytime soon. But I, um, I, I mean, gosh, there's so many gems in there that I think are so important. And there's something about that piece around the, the like partnership, promotion, people, that it gives you actionable items, like really actionable, tangible pieces that ultimately they are going to lead to your fundraising success. 100%. But if you focus on that and only that, it's going to distract you from the real value of those moments. And I think, mm. you know, both you and I in our respective roles, we have been accountable to metrics and we have been accountable to building community and numbers and all these things. And mm -hmm. and I, I'll speak for myself, like there have been moments in where I've been a little freaked out about it. What if I don't hit that number? What if I don't, you know, I think I can bust that goal. And I just continue to have to tell myself the whole way like act in alignment, 
focus mm. on the things that matter in the moment. That mm-hmm. you, that will lead to the numbers. Like stop mm. thinking about the number. The number comes because of these actions. This mm. is what really mm. matters. But it's required a lot of like restraint and and sort of self coaching to yes. to do that. And I'm curious how that's been for you too. No, uh, I mean, I'm still working through it. I'm reading this book right now. Um, you might have heard of it. The Mountain is You by Brianna mm-hmm. West. Mm-hmm. Such a game changer. Such a game changer. Every day I'm like, oh my God, what, what? But the thing that I realized, and I was literally just talking to some of my friends about this last night. What if you don't hit the goal? What if you don't you don't meet the benchmark? You have to ask yourself, in my head, yes, it's like, it's I don't know, good or bad, but I do take myself to the worst case scenario. And I realize I have survived 100% of the worst case scenarios that I, in my life so far. I'm not going to stop now. If you lose your job, don't you think that there's another job out there who's going to appreciate you and want you? And I also say life is always giving us signs. If something is not in alignment, don't fight to stay in something that's not in alignment. That is why our sector is suffering. That is why our missions aren't succeeding. That is why our people are not reaching their, 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 their most important goals. Because we're not in alignment. We, I talk about this all of the time. So take yourself to the worst case scenario and ask yourself, can I survive that? And maybe the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Okay, I love that. And that I love that like kind of worst case scenario, like catastrophic planning. I feel like I had a therapist who first walked me through that many years ago, who was like, all right, like, let's play it out. You know, right. like, if that yeah. happens, like, what's gonna happen, you know, and I mm. think that is really, that is really helpful. And I also just think the awareness around like, okay, this is happening right now. My brain Mm. is like playing this trick on me. It's trying to Mm. distract me. You know, there's this quote, I'm not sure who said it, but I've like reposted it on Instagram or something around, you know, the world is constantly going to be pulling us in a million directions saying, this is important. This is important. This is important. And it's our job to like pull our hands back and say, no, this is important. And I think when it comes to community building, that tight and that and building belonging, it requires that level of restraint. Everyone will be out there telling you what is important for your donors, how to do this. And I can't even believe I used the word acquire. I don't think I've ever used the word like acquiring donors. But what I meant by that was like, if your community isn't growing, it might mean that your community isn't a place people want to be. And it's not about... (laughs) Don't make me fall out. Don't make me fall out. Don't make me fall out. Because what? (laughs) That's the truth. Yeah. So if it's it's not about like you acquiring them and getting them, but if you're not seeing, you know, what we call that acquisition number, that growth number at sort of the top of your community, it is mm. a signal that that mm. community mu- is likely not building belonging, that it's likely not a place people want to be, and it's likely not even a community, mm. right? Then it Child, might, yeah. thank you would say that because we keep <laughs> throwing the word community around. I'm like, this isn't a community. You just email me. Like, what? <laughs> This is not a community. A community is not a one-way street. A community is we are talking together. And you talked about growth rates, but let's also talk about churn rates, right? If you're seeing donor churn also, if you're seeing your retention is not going high, what are some other signals? If people are not opening up your emails, if you're sending out things for them to respond to and they're not responding, like these are all different signals that I want people to like, these are these are the flags. And I'm like, okay, something here is not working. It may not be the community is wrong, but it does mean that there is something within the system that is wrong. Mm, okay, so you're hitting on sort of this point that I wanted, that I knew we'd get to, which is, you know, Give Butter is doing all of this work around really creating a more robust CRM system yes. and giving fundraisers the ability to have more coordinated and intentional touch points with donors. Mm, mm-hmm. And so here we are again in this, in this like middle of like, the human soul work of fundraising with the fact that like we do, we are operating an entity, right? Yes. And mm-hmm. and not just, and not just like that we're operating like an entity, but also, you know, because of fundraiser turnover, because of all these other things, I do think it's important that, you know, fundraising and the relationship building that happens as a part of fundraising is tracked and monitored and information is stored because you can't lose all your donors when you lose a fundraiser. And so I I think like all the relationship management side of fundraising is really important. How do we like use our tech 
and make sure our tech is like focused on the way that we want to build our relationships. Mm. Who child? The first thing that comes up to me, and I said this before, is that there has to be meaning behind the metrics. There has to be meaning behind the metrics. I don't think understanding your data is just important. In my opinion, it's imperative. And it's almost irresponsible for us to not understand our data. Why? Because you are in the relationship building game. The most common, I think that the average number of friends someone has is like five to eight, like beyond those direct connections, everyone's a loose connection beyond that, right? And so you cannot manage relationships at scale unless you have a system to do that. Because remember, 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 remember what I said in the beginning, you are now a facilitator. Your job is to create space for transformation to take place. If you don't know the details of your donors, if you don't know who's in, who's involved, if you don't know who's engaging, who's donating, who's a recurring donor, if you can't, if you don't have that information readily available, how in the world can you actually get them to a place of transformation? If someone gave you a big gift or they, they, they raised a paddle at an event so that they wanted to make a big gift and whatnot and you don't follow up with them, are you actually being a proper facilitator? Are you actually leading them to a place of transformation? Are you leading your organization to a place of transformation? Like these are the questions that I try to ask people. People say, well, I don't have time. I can't, I don't have enough time to give. I'm like, baby, you can't afford to not do this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and also I love Give Butter because we made it free. Our CRM in the platform is completely free. We want to blur every single barrier to entry for this. And we also want to, there to be no more excuses. Another thing that I love about Give Butter is that we have revenue generating fundraise um, emails. So you can actually send an email with a link to donate and you can actually see, did this email perform well? Did I actually generate donations from this email? Why is that important? Because we keep sending the same email template and wondering why nobody's responding. We keep doing the same. <laughs> if you want to do the same exact thing and expect a different result, that is where the problem comes from. That is where the problem comes from. Your knowledge is power. The knowledge is power and the data is going to unlock the doors that are going to get you to your destiny. What I love about all of that is like the purpose behind every action. You know, mm -hmm. I think when we say things and I was 100% this fundraiser, like I don't have time for X, I don't have time for blank. But let me tell you, I was wasting so much time on things uh, that did not matter, on things that, that were not tracking, that were making me feel productive and busy, but were not ultimately creating Can we talk the, about that for a second? What? Well, let's talk about it. Just allowing ourselves, to, we, we are addicted to busy. We are addicted to busy, and I'm guilty of that myself. But my thing is, okay, am I busy for busy sake, or is this actually moving the needle? And the thing that I started asking myself every single day is, how is this moving the needle? And if the answer is it's not, we delegate or we don't do. We delegate because remember, we are now on mission. We are on assignment. You are doing work that is moving the needle in your community. It's changing lives. It's putting food into people's stomachs. You don't have time to be addicted to busy. We don't yeah. have time to go on the pinwheel and the, and, the, and the spinning wheel of life. We need to be moving forward. Yeah. And part of that is recognizing that in that busy, in that hustle, we feel a sense of control. It feels mm. good to our body. And it like, <laughs> yes. this is why we talk. And so, yeah. And so we're like, like, and so anyone who's listening to this, like, that's normal. Like, it's mm. recognizing that, like, you're getting a feedback loop quickly that's reinforcing that behavior. You know, checking mm. a box on something feels good. And that's why and we'll talk about this in the Give Butter webinar, like, pulling, pulling ways that you can track the moments that matter and the actions that matter and making sure you're giving yourself that quick feedback loop is really important because look, there are things that like human motivation is wired for and fundraising is in conflict with some of those things in terms of mm. long feedback loop times and right, all these things. And so we do these quick win like mm. check boxes because we're just trying to keep our system regulated. Like we just mm. want to feel good at what we're doing. We're we're not doing that because we're bad people mm. or fundraisers. We're just we so badly want to feel like we're making progress. And that's yes. what that's what's happening in those moments. And so I think it's like 
having compassion for the fact that like, that's a really natural cycle to fall into having awareness of the fact that that isn't leading you to fundraising success, Mm. and then designing habits and strategies and actions and behaviors that you can give that positive reinforcement to and will actually drive you to success is like where the magic happens. Love it. So good. So good. And just acknowledging that, you know, I, I feel like if someone's listening to this episode, I want you to like acknowledge the fact that you are starting to do the work. Like this is doing the work because you're showing up, you're listening to the resources. And now my question is, this is another, I always say your life is always speaking to you. So this, let this be a lesson that's speaking to you. But my question is, are you going to listen? And if you listen, are you going to respond? And so that's what Power Partners is about. That's what we're doing at Give Butter. We want you to respond in community, right? We know what our transformation is. We want to help see you get to the other side. And that's why we ask you to get involved. That's why we ask you to do these things. That's why we say go to the webinars, right? Because we want you, we don't want you to do it by yourself because it's hard to do it by yourself. That's why I have Mallory. That's why I have coaches. That's why I have mentors because they can say the things that I don't know. They can see what I can't see. You know what I'm saying? And back to what we said in the beginning, community is about going together. It's about co-creation. So be in community with your own life because if you can do it for yourself, then of course you can do it with your organization. There's something that you just said that I have to double click on and share with you and then get your initial feedback. And I know we're almost out of time, but I had a podcast interview earlier today um, with Su Chi Huang over at Stanford mm-hmm. around the science and motivation. And what was so interesting, and and this is part of what we're going to talk about the Get Better webinar too, and, and a part of this mini series, but what really blew my mind is that in her research, what they found is that when we have a narrative in our head, like mm. something isn't going well, or we aren't doing well enough, or, you know, we have that self-doubt, it is our natural inclination to disconnect. Mm. We don't want, we isolate because we don't want to be exposed to things that one remind us Mm. that we aren't doing as well as we want to be doing. And because we feel this level of discomfort sort of showing Mm. up when we're feeling bad about ourselves. Mm. And when she said this, I've never heard this research before. And she was basically saying, she's like, and yet the moment that we have that natural tendency to disconnect is the most important moment to be connected in order to have motivation and in order to continue forward and to achieve our goals. And so I, when she said that, I was just like kind of floored because I was like, okay, like we, when a campaign isn't going the way we want to, or when we, when our fundraising for the year isn't going the way we want to, we have this natural inclination to disconnect and do the exact thing that is going to hurt that campaign and hurt that fundraising moving forward. And I think what's really amazing about what you've built over at Give Butter on the community side, you know, aside from just the platform piece is like getting people to continue to show up in community is helping them overcome that hurdle that they're showing up to those webinars with you guys, likely oftentimes not feeling great about certain Mm. things, but they're showing up anyways. Mm. And that is like scientifically proven to help them increase their motivation and ultimately do better. And so I think anything we can be doing that piece you just said about like the community you create for yourself is going to be the community you create for your organization. And I just want to like billion times click on that because I I just, it's true. You know what? I can't, there's nothing else I have to say because amen. (laughs) That's what, that's what it's about. (laughs) That's what it's about. You know, we just hit, we're about to hit 2000 people registered for our webinars every month. Two, when I took over, it was 60. We had 60 people registered for it. And I was just like, this is amazing. Like, this is unheard. I've never seen that before, right? And exactly what you just said, it's like, I am taking it back and I feel honored, but I also realize that it's not about me. It's about the magic that we're creating in this space and understanding. Well, I always say, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. But if you want to go far, go together. And that's when we get the success stories. That's when we get the wins. That's when we get people coming back talking about, oh, I did this and oh, we're doing, we reached our fundraising goal. Like that is what it's about. Those stories is what it's about. And I want anybody listening to this, your success story is on its way. Whether you're in give, whether you're in power, whatever, your success story is on its way. Just say yes. Start by saying yes. 
I'm so glad you shared those metrics about the webinar because I think what it is is a testament to exactly how you started this whole conversation, which is creating the space for and the conditions for community and belonging. So you're Come right. On. It's not it's not about you, quote unquote, but you have created those conditions. You have created that sense of belonging for other people mm. to be able to show up in their fullness, to to mm. like see each other, to care about each other, to create belonging for everyone. And that is, that's ultimately what it's all about. So mm. man, we brought that full circle. Come on now. We brought that full <laughs> circle. <laughs> I am so, so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for you. Tell folks where they can go to follow you, connect with you, learn more about Give Butter, all the things. All the things. Just find me online at The Floyd Jones, at The Floyd Jones on all platforms. You can see all the things that I'm up to, floydjones.co. You can see all the things. And then in the show notes, you'll learn all about Give Butter and what we have to offer. Mm, amazing. Floyd, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for all the wisdom and and space you create for mm. the nonprofit sector. Um, I'm so grateful to be your friend and to be a collaborator and just everything. So, and I have to tell for anyone's listening to this, Emmy, my four-year-old, is Floyd's biggest fan, biggest Love fan Emmy. in literally the whole world. And she <laughs> asked regularly to go on Instagram and listen to Floyd sing. So Floyd, I don't know if you want to send us off with a tiny little serenade, but that is most loved in our home. <laughs> you know what? It's so funny because I sing this song. At the, my most recent talk that I do called The Significance of Your Story, we talk about breaking up with limiting beliefs that hold you back. Because that one of the biggest inhibitors to building community is you have to let yourself be seen. And so I will sing this little chorus and I'll let the people go. I spread my wings and I learn how to fly. I do what it takes till I touch the sky. And I'll take a risk, take a chance, make a change and break away. Break away from the beliefs holding you back. Build the community of your dreams. See your success. I believe in you. 